In this video we will be using Pythagoras to calculate for an unknown side A or B. This is similar to example 1 where we were calculating for an unknown hypotenuse being the longest side but in this particular example we're going to be calculating for these sides. We've got two problems that we're going to perform the first of which is located here. Question A, we have a right angled triangle with sides 100 metres, 80 metres and an unknown X. And the first step, just like example 1, is we need to determine what these sides actually are with regards to A, B and C, which are the values we need to use in Pythagoras' theorem. I've already gone ahead and done that, but how I've done that is I've noted that this is a right angled triangle, here's our right angle, and the hypotenuse on a right angled triangle is located opposite the right angle. I've then called this side down here B, because to me it appears to be the base, and this remaining side will be called A. Step 2, we then define Pythagoras' theorem, C squared equals A squared plus B squared, and step 3, we substitute these values into the formula. What we have for C is the hypotenuse side 100, A 80, and B is our unknown X. I've carried the squares down into the next line of working. You can't drop those squares, that's extremely bad practice. Step 4 is the process of simplification and solving the problem. Now, unlike example 1, our unknown is not on the left hand side as a subject. So what we have is it over here. Now that shouldn't scare people off. The process for solving is more or less the same. We're going to simply simplify these two values of 100 squared and 80 squared. So the next line we're going to write 100 times 100 which is going to result in 10,000 uh, 10, is equal to 80 times 80 which is 6,400 plus the remaining x squared. As I said before, we've got this x squared on the right hand side as opposed to the left hand side which is the way we had in example 1, however that should not be a problem. What we have to do is get this x squared by itself. At the moment we've got 6400 plus x squared. If we had x squared by itself we would have a situation very similar to example 1. So we go about getting x squared by itself by removing this 6400 from the right hand side of the equal sign. If we remove this 6400 we will be left with x squared. Now it would be nice if we could just simply cross it out and remove it but that's not how we go about doing it. To get rid of this 6400 from this right hand side, if we simply look at the right hand side, if I were to take 6400 from this side we would be left with zero because we've got 6400 take 6400 which results in zero which would simply leave us with x squared which is how we're going to go about solving this problem so to get x squared by itself we're going to take 6400 from this side which would leave us with zero and therefore just x squared on the right hand side but if we do that to the right hand side we also need to do it to the left hand side so what we're doing is we're going to also subtract 6,400 from this 10,000. And this is what we get. 10,000 take the 6,400 is going to be equal to that x squared, which we now have by itself, because as we said, 6,400 take 6,400 equals 0. Now obviously we don't need to write plus 0, because plus 0 does nothing to the problem. So I'm going to scribble him out. So we've got 3,600 as a result of 10,000 take 6,400 equal to our value x squared. I could rewrite that as x squared equals 3,600, but I don't need to because what we simply have here is the same. To get x squared as x, we need to deal with this squared here. Now to get rid of the squared, we need to take the square root of the other side. So to get our x, I've simply written that square root of 3600 in the calculator will result in 60. This is the value for the unknown side 
but as a final fifth step, just like with example one, I've gone ahead and explicitly written the value for that unknown side, x equal to 60, and note I've included the units meters, which I can get from the question. That question's therefore solved and completed. Question B, very similar to question A, except the triangle appears to be orientated a little bit differently, but the process for solving is the same. Imagine if I had a pair of scissors and would cut that out, I could spin that 180 degrees and I'd get a triangle that looks very similar to that. So we're going to use the same process. First step, we need to label our triangle with sides A, B and C. We have a right angled triangle, which means our hypotenuse is going to be opposite the right angled triangle and on the longest side. So we can list that one as C. These two sides are going to be A or B, and it does not necessarily matter what you call it. I'm going to call this one B, and I'm going to call this one A. Step 2, we define Pythagoras' theorem as C squared equals A squared plus B squared. So these, uh, this is the formula that we're going to make the substitution in for A, B and C. That's the third step. We note that C is equal to 60. A is equal to X, and B is equal to 36. I've included the squares, you can't drop those. And as a fourth step, I'm going to go and simplify and solve this problem. What I have is 60 squared, which is equal to 60 times 60 in a calculator is 3,600. Equals X squared is X squared, plus 36 squared, means 36 times 36, which in a calculator is 1,296. Just like the last problem, I've got x squared plus something, or I've got two things on the right-hand side of the equation, and I want to basically get this by itself, such that I can then go ahead and solve for x as we did in example one. So on the right-hand side, I've got this plus 1,296. And I want to get rid of it. If I got rid of it, you can imagine I'd have x squared on the right-hand side by itself. And we would have something similar to example 1. So to get rid of this value here, what I need to do is take 1,296. If you can imagine me writing take 1,296 on that hand, oh sorry, take not plus, take 1,296 from that side of the equation, I would be left with zero, because 1,296 take 1,296 is zero, therefore I've eliminated this value. But to do that to the right hand side, I also need to do it to the left hand side. And what we're left with is this, 3,600 take that 1,296 gives us the x squared. And as I said previously, you could write plus zero, but there's no point to it because zero is nothing, so it doesn't change the result. If I take 1,296 from 3,600, I'll be left with 2,304 equal to my x squared value. And what I simply then need to do is change this x squared into an x. And to do that, I need to take the square root of that side, which is what I've written on this line. The square root of 2,304 will then be equal to just x, which is our unknown value. The square root of 2,304 in a calculator is equal to 48. And as a final step, I'm going to explicitly state that value and the units. Therefore, the unknown side x is equal to 48 metres. Once again, I get those units from the question.